Good morning, good morning, good morning, Facebook Live and also Clubhouse. I am Dr. Andrew Patton here, Transforming Faith Church International. This is the day that the Lord has made. Man, I'm rejoicing. I'm glad in it. I'm telling you, there is no sorrow in my heart, though there are things to be sad about. There is no anger in my heart, though there are things to be mad about. But look, on this great Sunday morning, a word from God that I want to share with you today is burning in my spirit. So I don't have time to be upset. I don't have time to be frustrated. But what I do have time is to release this word in the atmosphere for the people of God, in particular, those of you that are called to build, those of you that are sweating by your brow, many of you that are about to give up, many of you that are needing language. You don't need another prophetic word about what God is going to do because you're in the midst of what God is already doing, but you're getting weary in your well-doing and you're saying Pastor Patton I need you to help me with something I need to hear a word from on high that not only pushes me into further in my destiny but it also corrects some of my stinking thinking it helps me pluck up the apathetic attitude that I've had it helps me to quantify what I really need to be doing and what I need to be focused on I got a fan club that tells me the things that I want to hear but that's not working for me anymore I got a lot of folk that said that they were going to help me and they're not helping anymore or, or there are people that are helping, but I just don't have the staff. I don't have the resources. I don't have everything that I need. But I'm here today to tell you that you got more than you think you got. And we're going to go to the Word of God today simultaneously with my Clubhouse family, with Transforming Faith Church International Club on Clubhouse. Look, if you're not on Clubhouse, I don't know what you're waiting on. You need to get there because I really believe that the Lord, after he releases through me, there's going to be some things that I'll be able to decree and declare over the people of God's life there. So you you need to join us if you can over there. I know some of you may be on your way to church. Maybe some of you are still belly aching about the, uh, your team that lost, whether it was the Titans, whether it was the Cowboys, whether it was the 49ers, you know, all those losers, you know, all those guys that lost. No, I'm playing because, you know, some people that click off because if you talk about their team, boy, they, look, you can talk about Jesus worse than you can talk about some of these people's teams, but I digress. But I want you to go with me to the book of Genesis, chapter six, a very familiar passage of scripture. And as I stated earlier, I don't want the familiarity of the chapter to cause you to miss what the spirit of grace wants to say to you today. In particular, those of you that are in build mode, those of you that are in a space where if you told somebody that you are about to give up, you probably are. You've thought about it several times over and you're saying, look, pastor, I hear you talking to me today, but look. What's it to me building? Why do I have to build something? Why is it that you're talk, talking to me about this? Well, I'm so glad you asked today because many of you, you're in that space where you're saying, look, I know that it's hard. I'm called to build. I know that there's things that I'm supposed to be doing and these things are not working out. And I don't know what's going on with my Bible up on my phone. Maybe that's why I probably should have my Bible. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make it do what it do, Clubhouse and Facebook. Just give me a second here to let technology catch up with my mouth and my brain and my heart. And while I do that, let me open up with prayer on Facebook Live and also again in Clubhouse. Father, I thank you for what you're about to say. I thank you what you're about to move and what you're about to do because father you're always faithful and just to not only forgive us of unrighteousness but you're always faithful and just to give us a word from on high you're always faithful and just to make sure that if we're open to hearing your word oh god that you will actually do what only you can do which is help us be a little better to go on further to help us be exactly what you called us to be why because you're the god of the lord of heaven and earth so father i bless your name today and I thank you that's why you got to have to help me here's the Bible right here so father I bless your name today that you've given us the opportunity God to come before you another day to actually allow us to hear a word from you to preach a word oh God that is from you so father I bless your name I give you praise God I give you glory God I give you honor it's in the marvelous matchless ubiquitous all-powerful name holy name of Jesus the Christ and I pray and I ask it all for his sake. Amen. Now, when you got these peepers and you got these glasses, I tell you, man, you need a, a bigger print. But I'm going to make this thing do what it do. I'm not going to allow technology to stop me from being the very best that I need to be. And these pages are stuck together because I hadn't used this little Bible in a while. So let me sit that to the side right there. I'm, again, this is still we still we still where we need to be. We all right. We're going to we're going to go right here. And we're going to see 
there it is. Now the Bible app wants to act right. You know, it happens that way. I don't know why Bible apps and technology decide they think they're going to do or stop the word of God from going forth. It's not going to stop me. Uh, I'm used to having to filibuster a little bit. I, I studied broadcast communications in college. So I'm thankful that God allowed me to go through what he allowed me to go through. In particular, to get this word to you. So Genesis chapter 6, here it is, right here starting. I'm going to back up a little bit. The Holy Ghost said back up. I'm going to start at verse 9. The word says, and this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was so corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them and uh, with the earth. And make yourself, here's the instructions, here's the building portion, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it, it inside and outside with pitch, and this is how you shall make it. And the length of the ark should be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall, there that word is, you shall finish it to the cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower and second decks and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing the flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all in life in which the breath of life, everything that on this earth shall die. But I will establish. I like that part right there. Verse 19. I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark you your sons your wife and your sons wives with you and every living thing of all flesh shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you and they shall be male and female i'm gonna stop right there i just want to go back to my subject matter right there i know it's going to be hard but I'm going to build it anyway. Why are you talking to us about that, Dr. Patton, today? I'm so glad you asked. Because when we read this story right here, this arc and this assignment sounds like, sounds like it's very hard. And some of you, you're in spaces that God has told you to build some stuff. He's told you to build some things in unfavorable conditions. In fact... When we compare and contrast, when we just oppose this particular chapter and we bring it to modern times when it talks about the violence, when it talks about the flesh and the evil deeds and the things that's going on in the earth. People of God, can I tell you that you and I, we are called to build in some hard situations. There are a lot of people that don't subscribe or ascribe to our faith. There are some people uh, that don't really believe that the things of God is actually a, 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 a not a notable thing to do, but not only notable things to do, but a viable thing to do. And I think that even in the body of Christ, even when we get hard instructions like building an ark, in particular in an environment, because when you go to the next chapter and Noah begins to preach and say it's going to rain the people of his day thought he was crazy because they had never seen any rain I want to talk to some people today you're called to build some stuff that people have never seen come here Steve Jobs come here Bill Gates these are people that were serially known to build things in environments where people had never seen it before and I want to talk to some people today you're looking for confirmation you're looking for community you're looking for all manners of things to help you uh, really find some agreement, find some solace, find some support in some areas because it's hard. But I'm here to tell you today that you got to still build it even though it's going to be hard. And here's the truth of the matter. Again, here's my indictment on the body of Christ and many of us that are in ministry, many of us that are people of faith. We love the salacious commentary that tells us that God is going to do things and God is able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. But there's a B clause to that verse. It says, according to the power that works in you and I. There's a power that God put on the inside of us the treasure that's in earthen vessel that God has put on the inside of you and he is expecting you and I to not only perform up to par but to give our very best efforts to show up every day even in unfavorable conditions with uh, with, with with things like building in areas and in, in, in places where people don't respect you even in places where you don't have a whole lot of staff because when we read this it shows that all Noah had was his three sons and you know the wives probably 
probably wasn't cutting trees down. You know the wives probably didn't have hammer and nail. Not to say that women can't build, but I'm just making my assumptions based on what I'm reading. Because in those times, we know that men were skilled laborers. So with that being said, he's only got a four piece. And that's him and his three sons. So understand that he had limited support. He had limited resources. And I want to talk to some people today. You're giving up because you don't have all the help that you need. And it's hard. And it doesn't make sense. You keep going and setting up meetings with people. And they keep making promises. And they keep breaking your heart. Can I tell you today? that you don't need them. All you need is a word from God. And you got the instructions right here. We saw it right there. God gives the blueprint. He tells Noah, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is how many feet it's supposed to be. This is how long it's supposed to be. Many of you, people are coming alongside of you trying to remix the vision that God has told you. They're trying to tell you, no, it don't take all of that. Well, maybe God meant it this way. Or if, if God was in it, it wouldn't be that hard. Can I tell somebody something today? That's a lot of erroneous teaching and theology that we have been taught for many years to think that there are certain different things that God assigns us that it's supposed to be easy. Some days you're going to lose sleep. Some days you may not get all the meals you want to eat. Some days you may have to pay some people to watch the kids. Some day you may not have that person to watch kids. Sometimes you might have to take the babies with you. Uh, come shameless plug. <laughs> you hear the kids in the background. Uh, we're, we're doing all that we can to build our ministry and to build our platform. But even with all that being said, I'm only trying to pick the people to help you to understand that when you read the word of the Lord, it shows that there's a lot of hard places and spaces that God will walk God with, with us. But if we give up, if we faint, if we make excuses, if we get upset when it's hard, then that's when the building process stops. That's what I love about Nehemiah when it was just him and one other person. And those people tried to get him to come down, Sam Bala and Tobias. And they said, look, why don't you come down? This is not, uh, this is not what God wants. This makes no sense. Who out the you who told you to do it and many of you you're hearing the same stuff you're you're hearing your boo birds like Noah heard when they said it had never rained why are you building a boat what's the concept of a boat this whole thing doesn't make sense I can't see that I would invest in that and many of you you're about to give up some of you have given up some of you have folded up the tent some of you have put the plans aside and you don't even know that God has sent me by here this morning here on Clubhouse and Facebook to remind you that there is an assignment on your life. There is a mandate on your life. You're a man with a date. You're a woman with a date. And not to go to a fancy restaurant. No. You're a woman or a man with a date to complete a task that God told you to complete. And yes, it's hard. Yes, it makes no sense to those that are looking. Yes, very few people have been successful at doing it. But if everybody was successful at doing it, then everybody would do it. That's why God told you to do it. And the reason why he told you to do it is because he wants to get glory out of your life. When God said it this way, when he said to Jesus, when Jesus said, is there anything too hard for God? I'd ask you that question today. Is there anything too hard for the God of your salvation that is working through you, that has told you, I got some instructions for you. Yes, it's going to be hard. People are going to reject you. People are going to call you crazy. People are going to jump off the bandwagon. People are going to make promises. They're going to say that they're going to come alongside of you. They're going to say that they're going to partner with you. They're going to say that they have a vested interest to help you succeed. And then they'll uh, jump, jump ship like rats when the ship looks like it's sinking man they'll 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 change their direction when your opinion or the opinions of others about you is not favorable when your approval rating come here president uh, Biden when your when your approval rating has dropped when uh, people are casting lots against your success if they say I don't know if he's smart enough to do that I don't know if he has the perseverance to do that I don't know if he has the skill set to truly walk through that and then some of you you take on the energy of what people People say you don't need uh, other people to talk about you because some of you are pulling your own self down. Some of you are tearing your own self down. But I want to bring a scripture to reference that I really believe is very important and germane for those of us like me that are called to build. And it's hard. It's it's frustrating. It's not always uh, flattering. It's not always a lot of support. It's not always people calling you and telling you good job. There's not always people sowing seed. There's not always people coming along to help. There's not always people 
willing to give advice. In particular, people that have built businesses, people that have built ministries, people that have survived divorce, people that have survived all manners of challenging situations. They see you building and they keep on driving. They keep on walking by. They, some of them even have the nerve to laugh and snicker. Some of them even have the nerve to uh, really bet against you and cast their lots. But I'm here to encourage you this morning to hear the spirit of grace through me today that I know it's hard, but you got to build it anyway. You got to keep going. You can't take the, the, the peanut gallery's opinions. You can't take uh, the, the expert opinion even of some people that mean well, but you know you got a word from God. And when you know that you know that you know that you know that you got a word from God, then you got to move forward. Psalms 127, put it this way. It says, except the Lord builds the house, it cannot stand. And if you build, some build in vain. I want to help you today because some of you, you got to check your motives of why you're building. Because you know, when it's from God, sometimes you have a little bit more strength. But when it's from a vain place, when you're trying to prove people wrong, when you are trying to do it because they rejected you, when you're trying to do it because they wouldn't let you preach, they wouldn't let you teach, they wouldn't let you cook, they wouldn't let you do what you were talented enough to do. And I get that. That can be a good place of motivation. It can be a place that actually uh, actually pushes you into destiny, but it's a place that you can't stay in. You can't have their picture on the wall saying, I'm going to show you, because that's when you pull God out of it, and now it becomes a vain, uh, repetitious type of scenario, whereas you're doing it because you're trying to show them. And I know that that's, that's, that's pretty hard to hear for some of us, because competition is what been, has been, what's been driving you, and that's why you're getting weary in your world doing, because when the rat scatter, when nobody's watching, when nobody's saying anything, when nobody's sending any support, you gotta have that space where it says that God, I know you sent me here. God, I know you told me to do it. God, I know you said it was gonna be hard, but Lord, I need your help right here. And God is saying, look, I wanna give you my strength. I wanna give you my peace. I wanna supernaturally insert and invert myself into the situation. And if you'll not do it in vain, if you'll do it because I told you, if you'll allow my strength and my peace and my anointing to really enrich your life and enhance your life, then you'll find that some of the stuff that you got to build, some of the stuff that you are building, even if it seems like it's taking a long time to come to pass, then you'll have the ingenuity, you'll have the mentality, you'll have the thought process of how to build it, even when you make mistakes, even when stuff don't work out, even when things don't seem to come together the way you would want them to, fast enough, slow enough, mid-sized enough, does not matter. Many of you, you're looking at those things, and now your building is becoming vanity. That's why I said it right there in Psalms 127, you got to allow the Lord to build. It. You got to allow the Lord to give you the blueprint. If the vision is from God, then it's got to come to pass. If the vision is from you, that's why you're giving up. That's why you put it down two or three times because that vision wasn't from you. But God wants to reinvent himself in your life. He wants to show you some different things and help you tweak that vision. Because some of it was from him, but some of it, you allowed your ambitions to get into it. You allowed your unforgiveness to get into it. You allowed what people said to basically influence how you did it and why you did it. And God is saying, son, daughter, I want to help you repent from that. I want to help you change your mindset from that. Because when I partner with you, when I send you the resources, even though the job is hard, even though uh, some of the conditions are not favorable. That's why Ecclesiastes put it this way. He that looks at the wind. They won't sow. Those that look at their conditions, they won't sow. Some of you, you've been sitting there with a blueprint for years and God has said, I told you to build it. And you're asking God for help. And God is saying, yes, I have helped you. Here's a forest. Go cut those trees down. Look at what's in your house. Go get those tools and use what you got. In other words, many of you, you have talent. You have gifting. Man, you have all the things in the world that you think you don't have, but you got it right there. Like you told Moses, what's in your hand. You got a staff. Stretch out your hand and watch you see me do what I said I was going to do. And many of you, you're in that space. You're in build mode. You're like Dr. Patton. It makes no sense to me. This thing is tiresome. But I'm telling you today, if you hear the voice of the Lord, if you allow the Lord to shake your thinking and even your inward parts, even your inner man, there's going to be some things that the Holy Ghost is going to begin to reveal to you to show you you and show you how you've been your own worst enemy. How you've made excuse after excuse. How you've let circumstance stop you. Instead of building. Instead of lifting your voice. Instead of meeting God early in the morning. Asking for his direction. Asking for clarity. Some people say you shouldn't question God. 
Mm -mm. I don't believe that because right here in the scripture with the, 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 with, with, with the instructions, if I was Noah, if I wasn't sure about what a cubit was and what wood I should use, I would have went back and asked God those questions. Many of you, you have been taught that you are stupid when you ask God's question. Well, if you got a word from God, why are you asking this? No, there are times that when you walk with God, you need clarification because at the top of Genesis 6, it said that, that Noah found favor with God because he walked with God. And many of you, you're not finding the favor that you're supposed to find with God because you don't always walk with him. You'll start one week and then you'll quit another. You'll start a month and then quit another six months. And God is saying, this is a project. If you ever seen construction uh, up close and personal like I have at times, you have certain projects that get started, but when they run out of money, when strife rises up, the project gets stalled. Some of you are right there. Your project is stalled because you're stalling it, because you're making excuses. You're upset that it's so hard. You didn't count up the cost. The Bible says it this way. Jesus said, what king uh, takes war, makes, makes war with the king without counting up the cost? Some of you didn't count up the cost because as I said it earlier, you are doing it in vain. You are doing it in your own strength. You were doing it because of the rejection. You were doing it out of the competition. You were doing it because you saw somebody else and it looked good. But I'm here to tell somebody today, there's some instruction that God wants to download in your spirit for 22. There's some instructions. There's some things that he wants to show you. He wants to show you great and mighty things. But you got to be open to walk with him. You got to be open to pull yourself away from the violent crowd. You got to be willing to pull yourself away from the peanut gallery because everybody else is taking other advice. Everybody else is uh, consulting psychics and chakras and, and, and crystals and all manners of things. But when you tell people that you get your, 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 uh, your wisdom from God, when you tell people this man, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm looking to Jesus, uh, who is the author and finisher of my faith. I'm looking to the hills, which come of my help, because I know the help comes from the Lord. When you say those kind of things, they put you out the room. They don't want to support you. They don't want to sow into you. They don't believe in you. They'll laugh at you. They'll plot against you in certain respects. But I want to help somebody today. I'm here to grab you by that intellectual tricep of your spirit and tell you, come this direction, beloved. Go in that direction that God told you, like he told him in Revelation. Return back to your first love and watch me do some things that you never expected that I can do. And watch me supernaturally not only provide the resources, but give you the strength. Give you the strength to not only ignore the boo birds that's talking about you or, or trying to destroy you or sabotage what the Lord has already said. But I'm going to give you ears that hears my word. In other words, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they won't follow. So if you really know who God's voice in this season, you need to hear the voice of the Lord today. Because many of you, you're seeking confirmation. You're seeking approval. You're seeking, uh, you're seeking community with places that God didn't call you to. And when I say that, I'm saying it in a way that's favorable and nice to you because the way I thought about it when God was giving this to me I thought it was going to be a little bit more harsher but I want to encourage somebody today you got to put down the approval metrics you got to put down the acceptance metrics of others and I'm not saying that others can't be a part of our vision I'm not saying that God won't send benefactors to help you but if God don't send them if they never show up if they come for a season and leave it don't matter because the vision that God has told you to build the things that God has told you to prioritize. It is your responsibility. It is my responsibility. It is our responsibility to get busy working for the kingdom. It's our, abil uh, our ability uh, to basically hear the voice of God and not only hear his voice, but then obey. And not only obey, but be consistent. Many of you, your challenge is consistency. Your challenge is not talent. Your challenge is not who left. Your challenge is consistency. Your challenge is showing up if they don't show up. Still doing the job if they don't do the job. I get it. It's frustrating. It's hard. Our humanity, it kicks in. But you got to hear the voice of God. Pleasing God in this season. The will of God has got to become greater than anything else in your life. It's got to become a supreme focus. That's got to be first and foremost. So when you understand that if you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. And he'll make some of that plan that he gave you make a little bit more sense. He'll make those benefactors 
get in gear. He'll make those people listen. He'll even give you the language of how to communicate the vision and repackage it and repackage it and repackage it. When you're in build mode, sometimes you got to explain it more than one time. Sometimes you got to show up more than one time. Sometimes you got to do the stuff that's repetitious. Sometimes you got to do the things that seem like I'm told them. I expected them to catch the vision and they did not. And I can imagine that's probably what Noah went through with his three sons. Maybe he had to explain some things more than one time. Maybe he had to show up some hours when they was on vacation. Maybe he had to really do it on his own in certain respects. And when you are an innovator, when you are someone that's an originator, when you're someone that really has something from God and it costs you time, it costs you money, it costs you sleep, it costs you relationships, then and only then will you understand the value of what God has put before you. And that thing is going to come to pass because Noah preached for a hundred years. He told him it was going to rain. He built that boat little by little and God allowed him the strength. God allowed him the ingenuity. God allowed him the stamina that it took. And I prophesy today that that stamina that's coming up on the body of Christ, in particular, those that are obedient, in particular, those that are there walk with God like Noah did, in particular, those that don't mind being unpopular those that don't mind not always having the support those that don't mind getting on their knees fasting and praying not just asking God for them to get more help but to say God I'm in your will I need more strength I need more patience I need more uh, I need a better posture towards you and this project that you've given me and as I close out this morning on Facebook Live and as I get to Clubhouse, I want to help you today to understand that this text is important for those of us that are called to finish. Those of us that know, as I declared earlier at the start of the year, that this is the year of the finisher. But you can't finish if you keep starting and stopping. Or if you hadn't even started. Some of you hadn't even started. And God has troubled the water in some areas. God has sent some plagues in some areas. God has sent some chastisement in some areas. And like Jonah, the water is not going to stop moving until you go into the direction that he told you. It's not going to stop until you stop building. It's not going to stop until you change your speech. It's not going to stop until you recognize the cloud the size of a man's hand and that the sound of abundance of rain is appearing there. But it's going to take your faith. It's going to take your obedience. It's going to take your prayer life. It's going to take you taming that tongue. It's going to take you forgiving some things. It's going to take you starting over and starting again. It's going to take you wrestling with that thing to build it. It's going to be hard, but you will build it. You will finish it and God will help you complete it. But you got to be in position. You got to say, God, no more of me and more of you. God, I don't need to curse my own seed. I need to speak the word of truth. I need to be like Elijah and declare and decree in the atmosphere the blessing that I need, the needs that are the people that I need, the resources that I need, all the things that I need. I can speak them in the atmosphere because the world was formed with the very breath of God and the very breath of God that's on the inside of us has the same authority and if you'll believe those things if you'll begin to declare those things then some of those things will begin to come together those dry bones will connect and the skin will start coming up and then you'll start seeing things come together you'll start seeing yourself surpass what you did last year and in years past and if you stay faithful if you stay humble and if you know that God is the ingenuity he is the, he is the architect of your ingenuity he is the source of your supply. If you'll believe that and walk through that every day, even in the hard space, then some of those naysayers will begin to turn around. Some of them may even become those that support you. Some of them may even come on your side for a season and help you through it. But if they don't, it don't matter because your vision came from God and it is not from a place of vanity, not from a place of revenge, not from a place of brokenness, not from a place of just saying, I did it on my own. I surpassed them. I done something that's never been done before. No, I am building this because this is the instruction of God. I've been walking with him. He's been talking to me and I've been talking back and now I'm open because I don't think it's robbery for me to have the mind of Christ. I'm obedient even until the cross. I'm obedient even when I don't have enough. I'm obedient when I do have enough. I'm obedient when I have an abundance and I have a surplus. The theme right there, if you're not hearing anything else, the theme is obedience and obedience is definitely better than sacrifice. So I want to help somebody today that's listening. You're saying, Dr. Patton, I hear what you're saying. 
but I've been struggling this year. This year is only 23 days old, and I want to give up. I want to commit suicide. I want to nuke my assignment. I don't. Ministry is not worth it anymore. Family marriage is not worth it anymore. Building a business is not worth it anymore because it's harder than I bargained for. I thought that people, when they congratulated me, they meant it. When people said that they were going to support me, I believed that they were going to do it. In fact, there were people that I supported that have not been reciprocal. And God is telling me to say under the anointing and under this spirit right now that you got to forgive those people that have not been reciprocal. You got to forgive those people that are not coming along because as Noah Priest, he had enough room for a lot of people to come in and he did not. And I get it. That's frustrating. Some of you think, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of you say, maybe there's something wrong with my preaching. Maybe there's something wrong with my prophecy. Maybe there's something wrong with my worship. Maybe there's something wrong with my education. And God is saying, no, people will reject you. People will walk away. People will do what they do because they're people. When you read that text, the Bible says they were full of flesh. They were full of evil. What do you think is going on in 2022? Did you think evil just showed up with Noah? Did you just think that evil just showed up? No. Evil has been a problem for the, from, the, from the beginning of time. Uh, support and, and the lack thereof from the beginning of time. So you got to rejoice when you see these things. You got to understand that as Jesus said, you need to be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In other words, if he overcame it, you have already overcome it. That means what you're building is already built. In the mind of God, it's already happened. He's just waiting on you and I to complete it. He's just waiting on you and I to say, I know it's hard, but I'm going to keep building. I know I only get to build it for two hours a day because I got other obligations, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm not on anybody's timeline. I'm not competing with anybody. I'm not worried about who's laughing. I'm not worried about who's coming in or who's leaving. My focus is on what God said. My my focus is on the will of God. My focus is on the thing that God has laid out. And many of you, if you can just catch that vision for the rest of 22, repent from your thinking, from your negative thinking, from your idle thoughts, from your idle, even your idle worship and your uh, do nothing sometimes because you're mad, you're upset. You're, you're really trying to figure out how is it that I have such a great idea and nobody's coming alongside of me. Nobody's coming to rescue me. Nobody's coming to sow into me. Nobody's planning into me. I get it. But if you don't hear anything else, hear the word of the Lord concerning the repentance of a change of mind, knowing that you're called to build, knowing that God gave you the instructions, knowing that God said it. And if God said it, as the old people used to say, that's what settles it. So goodbye, Facebook Live. If we've been a blessing to you, our information is in the bio. If we can pray, if we can do anything, get to Clubhouse, though, because it's about to go down to Clubhouse, because I'm about to finish it. We're going to pray for people. And we're going to let God's people go like Pharaoh did. So I want to pray real quick over Facebook Live. Lord, I thank you for what you've done, what you've said. There will be people that are click on this and they'll hear this. Those that have been convicted in the spirits. Father, I pray right now that the conviction causes them to be in action. And those that have been inactive, not only in their faith, oh God, but with their walk with you, oh God. Ignite that passion to walk with you. So that way they can get instructions. So that way they can hear from you. So that way, God, they can be in strengthened. They can be entrusted. And they can also be in Enlightened and even more illuminated with the understanding of what you meant when you first gave them the vision in the first place to build it. Father, forgive us for our slothfulness. Forgive us for our disobedience. Forgive us of our sins, oh God. So, Father, we bless you today. We give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all for his sake. Amen. God bless you, Facebook Live. Come on over to Clubhouse if you're not doing anything. It's about to go down in that room. I'm so glad and thankful that we were able to join uh, you guys today on Facebook Live. May God bless you. May it keep you is our prayer. And we'll see you real soon.